What up, YouTube? We're back with more YouTube. Third installment in Citadel series. And uh, yeah, this is probably the last one for a little while that is going to be on this original map. Because next week, the new map drops. And bet we're going to be all up in that. So, this week, I got recommended or requested. Not words. Not. I got requested to make a video that's basically a short, quick, sweet beginner's guide to help people who are just starting the game. And I think that's a good idea because the tutorial to this game is subpar um i am going to try to implement controller controls for console gamers we'll see how that goes that was also another request i'm gonna try and do that uh, i do not play this game on controller however i will do my best for you all um so yeah, basically what I'm going to do is we're going to hop into this video uh, in a custom game and I'm just going to go over some few things like starter locations, uh, we're going to do spells, we're going to do uh, resource locations, we're going to do building locations for starting out for PvE, we'll do p building styles, kind of, and locations for starting out in PvP. Um, which keep in mind you don't have to worry about PvP until you're level 30 on a PvP server. Uh, but I'll leave timestamps below and yeah I'll try to go over as much information as I can. There's a lot that I'll probably miss and if I miss something that you uh, needed answered just leave a comment below and I will respond. I try to respond to every comment so. And if you like this video make sure you hit that subscribe and that like button because look, most of my viewership is unsubscribed that hurts that hurts me it hurts real bad all right let's just get right into the video then ah huh? when you first get into game i've gone over this before but you create a character you do the things and the stuff got some options here you can be a green boy if you want to be uh, for the purpose of this video we'll go uh, purple you know let's get some let's get some pink hair with the purple there we go uh, neo beginner create character okay this is the screen you're gonna see when you first start the game I kind of went over this in uh, my previous video but I'll talk a little more more about it right now. So this is where you want to start if you want to level the quickest. And if that's what you want to do, watch my previous video, quickest way to level 1 through 60, because that is where you want to be. If you want a quest, this is where you want to start. And the reason being is after you finish the tutorial quest in this castle, the first person it's going to send you to is Jembot, and he is right here. Uh, he is closer to this castle than this castle and it's easier to get to him so this is where you want to start for that I'm not gonna go over the quests um, if you have a question about the quests feel free to ask me in discord or in uh, the comments below let, I will leave the discord link down below as well <laughs> um, for this video I'm gonna start over here this is where you want to start if you want to focus on resources and getting a strong foothold in the beginning of the game you know like um like a decent stack of every type of resource start over here now when you first start in as i said in my previous video you uh go through a 10 hour animation and uh when it's done you'll finally be able to play so not really 10 hours but it feels like it oh look at those yellow nails nice we looking real good all right so you start in first person you can feel free to play this way 
if you want to. I do in close quarter combat, but most of the time I like to play in third person because it's more of a view. So if you hit tab, you're in third person. And you can look at your yellow undies. Looking real good. Uh, you can zoom out and zoom in with the bracket keys. Now for controller, it is, I believe, right stick to switch. Yep, you click R3. Uh, it should be R3 on PlayStation as well. I'm using an Xbox controller for this, but uh, it should be R3 on there as well. All right, I'm not going to lie. I can't figure out how to zoom in and zoom out on controller. The best I can give you is field of view, which is in settings, video, field of view. My max mine. Uh, maybe before I upload this video, I figured it out. But for now, I don't know. All right, so when you first get in here, you got your tutorial quest right here you can do. Mm -hmm. When you first start out, you should definitely do these quests. They'll give you a good set of starting items. So definitely complete all those. Um, now, controls wise, W, ASD to move, pretty standard. Space to jump. Left click is going to be your spell one. Right click is your spell two. R is your potion slot one, T is your potion slot two. On controller, it's gonna be left stick to move, right stick for your camera. Uh, left trigger is gonna be your uh, left spell, right trigger is your right spell, left bumper, right bumper for your potions. F is your fly button, B is your fly button circle is your fly button now the game doesn't really tell you how to do any of this stuff so I'm gonna help you uh, the first tutorial quest is gonna be craft cloth for crafting if you hit I to go to inventory or on controller it'd be like the back button the select button whatever you want to call this button um, you can right bumper left bumper to switch between the tabs or if you're mouse and keyboard, you can just switch between the tabs. Uh, the anvil with the hammer is your crafting tab. Most things you're not going to be able to craft in your pockets. The cloth you can, but as you can see, some things require specific benches. You're going to have to forge those benches on the ground in order to craft the items. This goes for like weapons. Food, armor, trinkets, all that jazz. Well, finish this cloth up. Turn this quest in. Fresh berry salad crafted. It's going to be the same thing. Um, attribute points. Uh, I go over this in both of my other videos a little bit. Um, I would recommend going carry weight first. Get that up to like 100, 200. Um, probably like 200 and then I'd work on health a bit you want to get health to like a base 900 without any armor bonuses or anything at least uh, and you can dump into damage a little bit along the way and then once you hit 900 health just put the rest in damage I'll put that on craft this Fresh berry salad. Where is it? it? Must be in a different tab. Yep, it's in the. Make sure you switch between these tabs. They uh, they they mean different things. So like these, this is like all your food and weapons and then trinkets. Like I said before. Um, fresh berry salad. Get that crafted. Turn it in. Collect the stuff and things. So you come over here, you look around and find nothing. I always have trouble finding stone, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you can pick up wood like this, and your rune crystal right there, and then you need to find a small rock to pick up. Generally I always have to go outside because I can't find any in the town even though there is some in here that you should be able to grab. There, there. 
Sneaky. Alright. Um, got all that. Go back and talk to him. Craft and use haste spell. Alright, the game doesn't teach you anything about spell crafting either. So we're going to do that here. Now, you got your first weapon. You equip it on console. Heads up. Your weapons are going to be annoying. You're never going to be able to manipulate these weapons. I mean, I think there is a way to manipulate them, but I can't remember how and I don't play enough console to know. So... If you figure it out, let me know in the comments and I'll update this video. But until then, I do not know a way to manipulate your weapons so that you can easily equip each weapon that you want when you have four equipped. On PC, you can go into your bindings and manipulate them through your weapon swaps. So if when you hit one, you were on the weapon that you wanted to be two, you could switch this to two and you'd be good if that makes sense um, but anyways spell crafting this is your spell crafting book these two spells will always be the same no matter what weapon they will always be the same the only way they change is with essence now let me spawn in some essence so that I can show you some things <laughs> Alright, we got one of every essence. When you first open this book, you're in Arcane automatically. You'll always have Arcane on. Okay? Uh, in Arcane, you'll have Haste and Arcane Step always. However, these two spells will be different based on the type of weapon you're using. Alright, on the axe, you can see we have Arcane Storm and Arcane Blast. We got Haste and Arcane Step. If we switch to the wand, it's now Arcane Beam and missile but still haste and arcane step the gauntlets blast and beam and the staff missile and storm as you can see each weapon type has different spells for it depending on what you have equipped here and what I mean by that is these essence are how you switch the type of spell you're casting <clears throat> So, if we had a Fiery Essence, these are now Fire Blast and Fire Grenade. These are now Bloodlust and Phoenix Rising. And if we switch to the Wand, we got Fire Bolt and Flamethrower. Bloodlust and Phoenix Rising stay the same. This is what I mean by these two spells will always be the same. These just depend on the type of weapon you're using. Um, for the gauntlets, it's flamethrower, fire blast, and for the staff, it's fire grenade, fireball. Melee weapons will always have the highest raw damage. So if you're looking for absolute raw damage, melee weapons are the way to go. That's why when you're making a harvesting tool, you always want to use a melee weapon for your harvesting tool. Reason being is, the more damage you have, the quicker you farm. With Extract, which we'll get to soon. The Wand has the highest cooldown reduction. Therefore, if you want to spam a spell, the Wand is the way to go. Gauntlets are the best at utility, so like buffs, because they give movement speed, as well as cooldown reduction, so... It's, they're nice to use for your buffs and stuff. Uh, staff is unique in that it doesn't have as high damage as the melee weapons, but it has the second highest damage out of everything. It doesn't have major cooldown reduction, but you can get some on the staff. And it can cast certain spells that only the staff and wand can cast. For instance, Dark Bolt which we'll get into here soon. These five slots are for adding buffs to the spell that you're crafting. For instance, if I was to craft Arcane Blast, there it is. You can see there's no bonuses on it. But if I was to add Arcane Blast to this slot and then add 
five bones. If I hover over it, you can see that it has 5% leech. As you play through the game, you're going to find loot on the ground all over the place. Wow, there's loot in a survival game? I know, it's crazy. Uh, there is specific items for specific things. Bones, for instance, if you hover over it, you can see adds up to 1% leech to crafted spells. There's leech, bleed, spell energy, damage, and range. Higher uh, grade materials will do give you more statistics. For instance, a phoenix egg will give 3% leech in comparison to 1% leech from bones. Uh, obviously, harder to farm phoenix eggs, so use those sparingly. They also can be used for crafting items, so I wouldn't recommend blowing through all your high grade materials. Alright, so what spells should you use when playing the game? Well, you're definitely going to want extract on a melee weapon. Definitely going to want extract. For added bonuses, I would do damage and or spell energy uh, if you're adding materials to it. Huge disclaimer, when I get into the damage spells here, on the February 3rd update that's coming out, this could all change, and it probably will. So these won't be the, A, the best spells, and also, what I'm telling you right now is not set in stone. If you like certain spells, run with those spells. Especially if you're in PvE. Uh, there's no need to go by what a YouTuber said or what a Twitch streamer said. One of the biggest mistakes someone can make in a game is to try and forge their gameplay around someone else. Uh, make sure you are doing what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with what I'm recommending, then don't do it. Uh, you'll probably play better if you do what you're comfortable with. That being said, what I like to do is run Extract. I highly recommend, disregarding everything I just said, that you run Bloodlust. It's one of the best buffs in the game. It probably will be after this patch. Uh, still, just because of what it does. Increased damage by 20% and increased health by 40% for 3 minutes. I recommend putting spell energy on this. And uh, I usually add it to my extract weapon. Now if you pop it, you see I'm at 200 health, max health right now. Now I'm at 289. So the more health you have, the bigger that bonus is going to be. And it, as you can see, it can be pretty useful. For damage ability, I recommend Dark Bolt on either a wand or a staff. Wand if you want to spam it more, staff if you want more damage. Uh, for Dark Bolt, you 110,000% want Leech. Leech for PvE is broken. And in general, even after the patch, it probably still will be. Uh, on Dark Bolt, it's even better because Dark Bolt, Dark Spells in, don't use mana. They use health. So, if you add Leech to this Dark Bolt, you're essentially casting for free. It is very OP. Um, when you hit an enemy with it, it puts a debuff on them that allows you not only to crit them more, but if you kill them with the debuff on them, they explode and deal damage to enemies around them. And you leech all of that. So, very, very good PvE spell. And PvP spell, even. Um, highly recommend this spell. It's uh can only be crafted on a wand and staff, though. So, you got your 
Bloodlust and Extract. You got your wand with Dark Bolt. You got another melee weapon with Blizzard. And Concentrated Storm. And then if you're in PvP, I like to run lightning strike with damage and spell energy as well as pounce on a melee weapon this allows you to fight in midair very well and uh, also more damage with your pounce and or escape ability with your pounce as for your second ability on your wand, you can do a utility spell or a damage spell. I like blink a lot. It allows you to get in and out of fights pretty well for PvE and PvP. You can put spell energy on that. Um, I'll show you the, the power of it here. So if I was fighting right here and then I blinked, boom, I'm out of that fight very clutch highly recommend like I said though you don't have to do the spells that I do the one last thing I'll give you though since you probably won't have frozen and storm essence to start the game is I would recommend running when you first start the abilities that you'll probably run is pounce and arcane blast this is a great combo when you first start. Uh, you can pounce in and blast, pounce in and blast, pounce in and blast. You get the idea. It's very good um, when you're first starting out and you don't really have essence at all. I will leave either on the screen for the video or below locations for uh, every essence that I have mentioned here. Uh, just so you can get going early on with all the spells that I just talked about. Okay, so we went over spells. We went over basic controls. Um, let's talk about resources and build locations. Alright, so if you started right here, first of all, you're going to go through the, the basic tutorial. And you're going to get this... Uh, fast travel thing along the way it's gonna tell you to grab a fast travel portal this is what that is uh, they are marked as towers you can see there's another one it's purple when you grab the t the uh, fast travel location at the top it'll turn blue and then you can fast travel between the two instantly for free no cooldown so make sure if you're ever near one of these towers you're grabbing them very important the other thing that you'll have to do in the tutorial is learn how to build this is your knowledge tree and where you learn all your recipes you have 60 points major thing that you want to make sure is that you spec into this elixir tree as you level the reason being is the elixir of amnesia at level 40 allows you to not only completely respec your attributes down here but also your knowledge tree so if you spec into something and then you're like man I really wanted this broom but I went into the flying essence instead and I don't really have the points well you make an elixir of amnesia and you'll be able to go back in and go through the brooms instead if you don't go into this tab here you're gonna be like level 30 you're gonna realize that you wanted to go in here because you wanted to respec and then you're going to realize that you need to be probably around level 50 before you're gonna be able to craft like learn this and craft it um, this also means don't fret too much about your attributes because you'll always be able to respect them as well as your knowledge as long as you go into this tree you're gonna be fine you'll be able to respec it's a little expensive on the materials you need but it's not too hard to get and you will be able to craft it 
eventually. <clears throat> but anyways, we came in here because it's you're going to have to craft a bonfire. And I forgot about showing you how to do this, so we're going to show it now. Uh, you want to learn the bonfire here, the fire pit. And then you can't craft in a safe zone. Also, if you have tames, don't bring them into the safe zone because they will disappear. Uh, it shortens your tame time. And we'll talk about tames here in a little bit. Um, all right, so if you were to craft a fire pit, you leave the safe zone, you hit B on the keyboard, you go into magic, there's your fire pit. And as you can see, I need more stone and wood, so hold on. Grab a little stone. Grab a little wood. That's your extract spell, by the way. You just point and click. Um, place a fire pit. Boom. And there you have it. Now, in the fire pit, you can see you can craft all these different food items. Food is great for, like, passive regen and healing in the beginning so uh, every starter area has a bunch of boar it's pretty easy to kill you can run around and find them out here let's see where I say that and now I can't find any there's out two they're a little harder to chase down but also killable let's go ahead with pounce and arcane blast kill this boar boom kill them open it up He's got boar meat and milk, which you can use for crafting as well. And bones. Make sure you're always picking up those bones. Uh, the hide and stuff is used for crafting. Leather for armor, which you'll want. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So, you got the elk meat. You can come over here. And then you can craft salted boar if you had a salt. To get salt, that is why we started over here. Your first resource, salt, all along the ocean. This is what a salt rock looks like, and you're going to find it all up and down this coast. So, you just look at it, extract. As you can see, we're getting salt. You got your one salt and your one boar meat. Craft. There you go. And as you can see, there's a little timer. It cooks the meat. And a little bag pops out. There's your meat. Then you can equip it. And you got your meat. It'll give you some regen. Regen some mana. On controller, to access the build menu is going to be left on the D-pad. And then left trigger, left trigger, left trigger to place. Uh, if you build something that you don't want, you just scroll down to the X, look at the item that you don't want, and then destroy it. For gear, I would recommend the leather path. Leather is the only... Uh, armor that can give crit chance and crit damage outside of the fourth cultist crypt which is basically an endgame raid so I highly recommend going into this it weighs less than the heavier armor and in the end it gives as much armor as the heavier armor and as the 60 cloth gear highly recommended going into leather for weapons I already talked about it a little bit but melee weapons wand and st or and or staff I would go one of these two and then a melee weapon so that's what you want to focus on for gear now where are resources well you saw the hide on the boar that's where you're gonna get all your hide and leather that and finding chests in these camps if you find chests and you break down the gear with a deconstruction bench you can get leather that way as well um, but you're gonna need to fight like orcs and stuff to do so that might be a little daunting at first but once you're running dark bolt it won't be that bad I'm cheating right now but it's just to show you locations 
All right, from this castle where you spawned in, the reason why we spawn here is because of all the resources located all around. You got rune crystal. That's those. You got stone, which if you want a lot of rune crystal, I recommend farming stone and wood and then using a deconstruction bench. You'll get uh, quite a bit. The stone's better than wood. Let me rephrase that. I recommend farming stone and deconstructing it because that'll give you quite a bit of rune crystal. Um, all along this lake, it is called Raven Eye. Let's unlock all of it. All around this lake, from the starter area that you chose, is iron. Which you're going to use for a lot of your crafting of weapons and armor and building pieces. This is what the iron looks like. If you farm it. You can see I got some iron ore. All around this lake is iron. So you got salt here, iron here. Another thing that you're gonna use a lot is gold. Gold is gonna be located over in the northwest direction from this lake. I'll go show you that now. And here is the gold. On the map you can see gold everywhere. Then you come over here. That is 2.42, 1.07. At the end of each of these little islands, not all of them, but some of them, there's gold all over. See, here's another little bit of gold. This is 2.23.72. So if you need gold, this is where you come for gold. You have little camps all over that you can farm and get the chests for more leather and other materials that you'll use for crafting. You got your mushrooms. You got a monolith nearby that you can grab. crit chance and movement speed these things are nice whenever you're near them grab them they look like this on the map uh, they give bonuses that last an hour and there's no cost you just grab them and you have it so highly recommend grabbing those whenever you're near them definitely worth as you can see this area is full of materials that gets into my next bit of information where should you build and how should you build well, in PvE, how you build is completely up to you. Nobody's going to raid you, so you do what you want to do. I can give you some tips on, like, sprinklers and stuff, but other than that, build how you want to. I personally like building somewhere over here just so I can access the gold and the iron and the salt pretty easily, and I got to teleport. So, like, right here or down by the lake or over in this area anywhere around here in PvE I would say is a good place to build for PvP it's a little bit of a trek but I recommend you build out here in this swamp area the reason being is nobody really comes out here they might come over here for gold but nobody comes way out here. Most likely you're going to be safe out here. Um, now I'm going to go a little in depth with how you should build in PvP. But it ain't going to be perfect. So I'm just going to show you an, uh, some ideas. So if I was building a base. Let's say this is my base. First of all, I'd want to block off the scaffolding so they can't get underneath and damage and come in that way. You know, you don't want that to happen. 
Oh. Your throne is the most important thing that you can place. And I haven't learned it yet. <laughs> uh, you want to protect your throne. As soon as your throne is destroyed, it's your whole base is abandoned. And they can place the throne and claim your whole base. So you want to protect your throne. So what you want to do, preferably, is box this in. And then maybe honeycomb it. And what honeycombing is, it's basically, we're going to, basically we're going to put pillars all throughout this. Like that. And then, if you're doing marble, you can do curved walls, but wood doesn't have that. And uh, then you put a diagonal wall in the middle. Do some sort of roof piece, like so. Fill the rest with pillars. Wall it up. And close it up. I don't know what that is. Let's get rid of it. But as you can see, this is pretty boxed in. So what you do is you do that all the way around. Now, for wood, like I said, it doesn't have the proper items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to show you what a real honeycomb would look like in marble. So if I have... The same structure oh, right here okay I do a wall a wall a wall pillar 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 curved wall corner roof pillar Diagonal wall. Pillar, pillar, pillar. Oh, we ain't done. Curved wall. Wall it off. And then close her up. As you can see, that's pretty defensible. If someone was to break this wall here, they thinking they're thinking like like let's say like look. Let's say this is whole this whole thing is walled off, right? This is your small little base. And for some reason you honey only honeycombed that portion. I don't know why, but got all this. Get out of the way, sir. Got a door here. You got your stairs. It looks real nice. Okay. Let's say they break in through this honeycomb. Let's say the whole thing's honeycomb, but for the sake of things, let's say that this is the direction they attack, okay? And they break through this wall. They think they got in, but wait, what is all this? So then they break through this wall. Oh, there's more walls. Break the pillar. Still more stuff in the way. I can't even keep going because I'm on cooldown. 
this is how you want to defend your base honeycombs out the wazoo like I said with wood there's no curved walls so you're kind of forced to do pillars and oh a roof piece you don't get the walls in there but you can still kind of honeycomb you still kind of have that ability that there to a diagonal wall some more pillars wall it off and then put a roof on it see you still got you can still honeycomb you're just lacking the curved walls highly recommend that you do something of that sort It'll make your base way more defendable. As for little tips and tricks I can give you before ending this video. Farm all the things. Loot everything from animals. You're like, you're always gonna need the, the meat. You're always gonna want the hide. You're always gonna want the leather. Um, when building in marble, the doors, you probably want to go ornate. As you can see, you can see right into my base here. That kind of sucks. Someone can scope out your base. That's no good. Whereas a marble door, I ain't seeing through this door. You know what I mean? So... Marble doors are really nice. Um, for sprinklers. Let's do the sprinkler action. Where is that? Where that be? Right here. Alright, so when placing sprinklers. Let's say my sprinklers right here. I got my garden plots. First of all, two Hobarts is enough to fill up every plot that is connected to this sprinkler. A sprinkler can do all eight plots around it, but also, not only can it do all eight blocks around it, but if you place a sprinkler and then build above it, like so it can also hit nine spaces above it so your sprinklers right here it can water all of these and all of those so you you want to utilize that because then you can use two hobarts to fertilize all of this as you can see it's giving its watering these right now and watering all of these two hobarts will fill all of these that way you're not overusing your hobarts um, one, one sprinkler is gonna hit uh, 17 I think it is 17 plots yeah keep that in mind very important the spell blizzard if you quick cast it is just a small little thing see However, if you hold it, the range on which it hits is actually much bigger. See it expanding? You got like almost double the space there. So keep that in mind. When taming, first of all, the tame spell is a light essence. It is pacify. When taming, you want to lower the target's health. Think of it like Pokemon. You want to lower the target's health to around 100. Below 200 and somewhere around 100. Below 100 if you can make it. 
Um, this will make you tame much quicker than if you just try and tame at full health. If I was to tame something, like say a boar, What I would like to do, you get them low, and then you tame them. You give them any name, it doesn't matter because you don't want them to run away, and then afterwards, in your tame tab, you can change the name. For your tames, you can see the tame time. This is how long until they become untamed. So when you first tame something, you want to give them food to up the tame time. Preferably, I like to have mine at over 24 hours when I go to log out. That way I know that if there's a day where like I'm like I don't have time to hop on right now, you know, you're, you're still good. Your tame's not gonna untame itself if you're busy. You know what I mean? So make sure you get that tame timer up. And as I said, don't bring them into the starter area. It, it'll it rapidly untame your tame if you do so. Another thing to note is you can only tame things within 10 levels of your level. Meaning, at level 40, you can only tame things up to level 50. You can tame things at level 20 and below, still at level 40, but only 10 levels higher. So if you ran into a level 54 monster at level 40, you would not be able to tame that. Other than that, I think that basically covers everything for a starter that you would need. Uh, like I said, I'll get the essence locations in the description. Um, we'll leave timestamps. I know this video is kind of all over the place, but it was kind of on a whim, thrown together last minute. Things been going on, so, you know, bear with me. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to leave a link to my Twitch, my Discord channel, and Citadel itself down below. I stream 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday every week, so if you want to hop in, chat with me, ask questions, what have you, talk smack to me, you can find me there. Um... In the Discord, I'm always active unless I'm asleep, so you can chit chat and ask questions in there. Uh, if you have something that wasn't addressed in this video, leave it down below. I will, like I said, answer every comment um, when I see them. And yeah, if you like the video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the things, and. Yeah, I'll catch you next week with a new video or Monday on stream. Hope to see you there. Later!